and welcome back max fan speed control this is version 1.5.16 and they do update it as they need to um, and you get notified now this is a totally free app you can just google max fan control and voila and you can download it anyway very handy intel or apple silicon max makes no difference okay works on both now with that why would you want this program? Well, I, I personally want it because, well, it helps me keep a, an eye on the temperatures of all my SSDs and or hard drives, okay, HDDs, uh, that can come up in the list, okay? Not every drive is capable, so you may even have to restart your computer um, in order for changes to take effect, okay? or quit and restart the program. One of the two, maybe even both, um, when you're plugging in a new device, okay, that this can work with. Anyways, uh, Western Digital drives work fine. Uh, Kingston drives, obviously your Apple SSD. Uh, you can have it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Just depends if you're Canadian or American or whatever country you're from. I like the whole Celsius value myself. However, um, it gives you temperature readings of a lot of things like CPU efficiency cores, your airport proximity, uh, performance core average. Now you can only pick one core for it to list up on the top menu, okay? And uh, that's where you'd want the information displayed quickly. And you can also have your fan speed registered. So exhaust, I'm gonna walk you through that. Um, because about 99% of everything I do on my M1 Mini is strictly, you know, the performance cores, well, I'm more concerned with knowing what those temps are. Right now I'm hitting about 88 Celsius because I'm actually running handbrake compressor um, in the background, other than doing my screen recording app to do this, but that's actually an average temperature for a compressor. When I'm editing a video, the thing barely even moves. Um, and my fan speed right now is around about 3,900 RPM, roughly 3,916, around that area. So, but I wanna keep an eye on that, but you can choose which one, it's kind of up to you. GPU proximity sensors, M1 imaging signal uh, processor, neural engine temperature, um, your SOCs, all three of your uh, SOC sensors, and of course, everything else in the list here. Now, preferences. If you go into preferences, this is where you can show it in the dock, which is down below dock, as we know. Um, I have it in the menu bar because it's just less hassle. Uh, check for updates whenever the app starts. So that could be every time you boot up your computer or reboot the computer. Auto start, minimized when you log in, recommended, okay? Um, and that puts it up in the top corner, generally. All right, now, temperatures, connected SATA, connected NVMe drives. Works perfect with Thunderbolt drives, will work or will not work with some external type C drives. Kind of varies on that one, okay? Um, I build my own drives, uh, so I don't usually worry about it. They usually all show up for me, um, but some cases won't if they're just a straight type C. They don't all. Um, use Fahrenheit temperature scale or, and of course, precise display of temperature when possible. Something you might want to check on. Now, um, we don't have any eGPUs connected by a Thunderbolt, so it's great. All right. Now, uh, icon color, monochrome or colored, color always looks better. Okay. Fan, uh, exhaust or none. Okay which means you won't get a fan reading up top if you have it listed as none. But if you list exhaust, then it's gonna show you that fan, right? If you have more than one fan in your Mac, I'm not sure how that works because I've only ever had Macs with one fan, so that's all I can tell you there. Sensor, now this is one where you can take the priority. Which one is the most important to you? That's the one that you want shown. So for me, it's performance, okay? And uh, yeah, and you can just click hide to the menu bar and poof. Now, the other thing you can do too is your fan speed. Now, default, this is on automatic, which means Apple gets to take over, okay? If you want 
you can have a consistent value, okay? But it will not change that value up or down. So if your computer gets hotter, it's not going to raise the fan any higher, all right? So you gotta kinda decide how you wanna run that thing. Now on Intel Max, I generally run the fan within about 1000 RPM from max at all times because those are hot chips and with newer OS's alone before you start running crap those Intel chips are getting hotter and hotter and hotter with each OS and if you're also using Open Core Legacy Patcher to put unsupported OS's on Mac so you can keep your Mac alive well uh, you're going to be wanting to probably go on to the custom side and whatever Mac you're, you're using, run those fans within 1,000 RPM of Macs. Don't run them all the way to max because you'll just do nothing but wear them out quicker. But run them within 1,000, oh, excuse me, and you'll be fine. All right, now you can also um, put this by sensor-based value as well, but manual or auto, it's kind of up to you which way you want to go. I leave it on auto because I just prefer it that way. Um, just makes more sense, you know, so, but um, if you want, you can crank them up higher. Um, even if you're just doing like as a temporary kind of thing. Uh, let me just get my handbrake thing here. Okay, that was Nightmare House I just did, so we'll quit there. Uh, Nightmare House is now done, so I'm going to give you a bit of an example here, okay. Um, I'm going to compress a program, Russian Fishing, because that's my next one. Now, as soon as I fire this up, you're going to notice that the temperature is going to start climbing. Um, and of course, the RPM is going to climb with that. Now, if you're on auto, it's only, the fan's only going to go so high. But if you want a constant level, okay, say 44.99, so let's, uh, let's call that 3,500, okay? And so you just type in 3500, click OK. Now it'll automatically bring the fans up to that range. Now that is one thing you could do um, ahead of doing a bigger project because you're probably not going to hit full bore. But whatever you are, within a thousand. And that could keep things a little bit cooler yet um, before things would normally start to get much, much hotter. So right now I'm running about 85.4 degrees um, on that chip, and that, that's a little hot, and you can see we're at 80, 85.6. Uh, if you're looking at my CPU performance cores here, um, and that's getting a little on the toasty side. But what happens if we go back to automatic? Okay, we go back to automatic and let it do its thing. The RPMs are going to drop down. Now the temperature may stay stable, uh, the temperature may still continue to, to go down a little or just who knows, right? It's, that's something you got to figure out. So I just leave it on automatic all the time and I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. So whenever you're done with the program as far as messing around with your settings, you can either hit the X in the corner here to just close this window out and it stays running in your top menu bar at all times. Um, or you can just quit the program, but then you don't get to keep an eye on anything. It just quits. Because it is an application either way. And it's not very big. It doesn't use up hardly any RAM at all. Okay? It's, or anything else at all. It doesn't use up much of anything. So it's kind of worthwhile having the program. But again, you know, that's something that's up to you. There's a lot of utilitarian programs out there for Macs. This is just one of them, and it is free. There is a paid version, though, that can give you access to a bunch more stuff, apparently. Um, maybe one day I'll pay for it, but I've been using this program now since the, pretty much the first time I heard of it years ago when I had Intel Max. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been fine. I've always used the free because all I care about is certain things, and for that I don't need to pay for the program. But if I wanted more access to more features, then yeah, I, I definitely would pay for it because, well, you don't have a choice anyway. So there you go. But otherwise, it is 100% free. There's no ads or any other garbage. So 
Way to go and have fun. And see, now you can see I'm up to 87.2 and the fan automatically climbed up a little over 3,500 RPM, okay? And we're pushing 89 degrees. This is what compressor programs do. Like video editors, depending on the editor, like I use iMovie and it doesn't even barely move the thermostat, let alone it doesn't do anything with the uh, fan. It always stays at idle. But then again, I'm a simpler editor. I'm not a complex kind of guy, so, and I use iMovie. You know, I'm not using DaVinci or Final Cut or anything else super heavy duty, right? So mileage varies. varies. Anyway, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go check out Max Fan Control. Like I said, Intel or Apple Silicon both. See ya.